Dus papa Alfa 0, Eco Tingo, Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate van vandaag 8 mei 2016. Dat is het bulletin van zondag. Today's bulletin as always on Sundays will be in English. We do have Morse code today and right after that we have an SSTV image in PD50 which is decodable with your smartphone using Robot36 app on Android or CQ SSTV on iOS. Alpha Tango 5 Papa, Victor Uniform 2 Whiskey Hotel, Victor Uniform 3 Kilo Papa Lima and Victor Uniform 2 Charlie Papa Lima will be active from Island of Rames Waram between Peninsular India and Sri Lanka, IOTA AS173 from May 6 to 9 as Alpha Tango 5 Papa, they will be operating 40 to 10 meters. A group of radio amateurs from Japan will be active from Guam Island, IOTA OC026, May 26 to May 30, as Alpha Bravo 2 Sheratango, stroke Kilo Hotel 2, Kilo Golf 6 Whiskey Tango Whiskey, stroke Kilo Hotel 2, Kilo Bravo 3 Lima Tango Bravo, stroke Kilo Hotel 2, and Alpha Golf 6 Sierra Lima, stroke Kilo Hotel 2. They will be operating on mainly 40, 20 and 50 meters single sideband. Radio Amateurs members of Vladivostok Contest Club will be active from Reineke Island, not far from Vladivostok. IOTA AS066 in RSGB IOTA Contest, July 30 until 31, as Uniform India 0 Lima. They will be in Mike Sierra category. Whiskey Papa 3 Alpha, Hotel India 3 Yankee, Hotel India 3 Charlie Charlie, November Papa 4 Zulu and Hotel India 3 Tango Tango will be active from Dominican Republic in CQWW WPXCW contest May 28 and May 29 as Hotel India 3 Tango Tango. They will be in Mike Sierra Lima Papa category. Flavio India Whiskey 2 November Echo Foxtrot will be active from Fuerteventura Island, one of the Canary Islands, IOTA AF004, July 11 until 25 as Echo Alpha 8 stroke India Whiskey 2 November Echo Foxtrot. You will be operating on HF band, including activity in RSGB IOTA contest. The Netherlands has legalized small initiatives for medium wave. The same time no new high power stations will be permitted for medium wave. In the last couple of months the Dutch government held a public survey and has used the info from it to create the new legislation. There will be three licenses, one is 100 watts, sort of a commercial license, the other is 1 watt HF. There are a handful of frequencies in a limited number of locations throughout the country available for the 100 watt licenses. There is one frequency, 1485 kHz, that is dedicated for the 1 watt stations and they will have a 1 km separation from each other minimal. Both AM and DRM will be permitted. The third license form is a special event license, similar to a rule for special event stations in the FM band. The 100 watt frequencies are 747 kHz, 828 kHz, 1035 kHz, 1251 kHz and 1395 kHz. The new rule starts as of May 11th. Starting that day applications can be sent in which will be handled in order of submission. From the headquarters of the American Radio Relay League in Newington, Connecticut, this is ARRL Audio News. ARRL Chief Technology Officer Brennan Price, N4QX, says there is little reason to be concerned about a new synthetic aperture radar, or SAR, contract recently awarded for operation within the 70 centimeter band. The contract to Airbus Space would involve determining the density of the Earth's forests using a P-band SAR that falls into the 432 to 438 megahertz spectrum. N4QX said SAR activity has not been found to be a significant problem to amateur radio activity on the 70 centimeter band where it is subject to significant constraints. The interference potential from one orbiting SAR to one fixed amateur station is on the order of less than one minute over an orbital period of more than 10 days. N4QX notes that, practically speaking, nearby electrical lines and Part 15 devices are more likely to be bothersome. From around the world, this is Newsline, Amateur Radio's first and only independent, on-the-air news and bulletin service. Now, here is Skeeter Nash, N5ASH. 
In our top story this week, the FCC has issued a warning to an unlicensed operator charging him with jamming the bands in the New York metropolitan area. The agency's Enforcement Bureau sent the warning to Daniel DeLisi of Astoria, Queens, New York, on April 20th. Acting on a barrage of complaints, the FCC sent the warning after its special counsel had several telephone conversations with DeLisi and gave him a number of verbal warnings. It then sent the document, which says in part, quote, In spite of these warnings, the New York office continued to receive information that you were operating radio transmitting equipment on frequencies in the amateur radio services, land mobile radio services, and personal radio services without authorization, end quote. FCC direction finding had confirmed unauthorized two-meter transmissions from Delise's home on April 7th, when it was also discovered he had a handheld radio and seven mobile radios programmed to operate on those bands, along with rooftop antennas. The document also recounted that Delisi admitted to the agents that he had operated on 147.96 MHz that same evening. Delisi has been given 10 days to respond to the notice before the FCC decides on sanctions. You're listening to The Rain Report from www.therainreport.com. World War II developed really as a result of Germany being sectioned off into two parts after World War I in the Treaty of Versailles in 1919. And that treaty forbade them from having an army, an air force, or a navy, and it split Germany into two parts with Poland stuck right in between. And there was at least one man who was not at all happy about that. And if you look in his eyes, you don't have to be a psychiatrist to see the madness in those eyes. And he screamed and he yelled and he said, we're going to get Germany back together again. We're going to fix this mess. And he built up an incredible army and air force and a navy illegally, according to the Treaty of Versailles, and instituted the Blitzkrieg. And the Blitzkrieg is lightning warfare. And he just went crashing across Europe, taking over everything and literally took over entire countries. And when he took over a country, of course, his officers had to have some place to live and they took over apartments. What they did was to take all of the furniture that they didn't like out of the apartment, throw it out on the street. They forced people to clean the apartment and they simply moved into the apartments. And that's just one of the things that they did in their occupied behavior when they took over a country. This was not happy for the French, not happy for any of the countries that were occupied, and they developed a group of people which are known as the resistance. Some of them were resistance fighters and some of them were resistance spies. And here we see a lady with a perfectly innocent looking pocketbook unless you look very, very, very closely at that little point on it, which is the lens of a Rolleiflex camera sticking out. And she is taking pictures of German military installations to report back to England and to the Allies. Of course, it was very important for the Allies to get as much information as they could about what was happening in Germany and what the Germans were doing in order to be able to plan an invasion. One guy decided he was going to protest the clothes rationing. The Germans rationed clothes and he decided he was just going to walk around without any clothes to protest clothes rationing. I thought that was just a great way to protest. And of course there were more conventional kinds of protest. The groups uh, would get together and attack German installations. So there was a lot of activity going on in the resistance fighters in countries that were taken over by Germany. And part of that required that the people who were resistance fighters build radio receivers and listen in to instructions from England and instructions from the Allies. The penalty just for possessing a radio receiver was death. So it was rather important that these radio receivers not be visible and that you not be caught by one. They would build a radio on a breadboard. We're all familiar with breadboarding radios. This one's pretty easy to see. So they got a little more clever and they started building them into suitcases. And then they got even more clever. 